Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. In a world of doubting Thomases decades ago, it never would have been possible for stars to shine in the daytime. But in this day and atomic age, anything's possible. Thus, it's not only possible, but a fact that only on stations of the CBS radio network, stars do indeed shine in the daytime. And they're stars of the first magnitude, one and all. You'll find them illuminating an entire segment of your daytime listening every Monday through Friday. These stars have all been named by celestial authority vested in their forebears. Those names are Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter, Bing Crosby, Rosemary Clooney, Gary Moore, and Durwood Kirby. You won't find them in your book of the planets and stars, but no compendium of show business luminaries would be complete without them. Monday through Friday, your radio set is your personal telescope on this star-studded display. On your CBS radio station. To list them once again, Arthur Godfrey, Art Linkletter, Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney in tandem, and Gary Moore and Durwood Kirby. Enjoy them often. Somebody could get at you. <coughs> Doggone bee buzzing around his head all day, get out of the body's brain. Ah. Oh, God, no luck. You no, know, a sting doesn't do him any good either, Joe. Oh, no, Mr. Dillon. Well, I tell you, I'd as soon get stung as listen to all that buzzing. Well, let him sting you then and get it over with. Yeah, no, Mr. Dillon, I can't rightly do that. Well, why don't you try opening the window? No, 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 I just closed it. That's how he got in in the first place. All right. Oh, my goodness. Flew right out that window. But... He was trying to get out all the time, Chester. Well, now, you, you can't be too sure of that, Mr. Omar. I've no bees to just absolutely ignore. Well, well, Miss Church. Hello, Chester. Matt. Hello, Samantha. Come on in and sit down. Yes. Here's chair, man. Thank you. Uh, Matt, uh, I need your help. Uh, sure, Samantha. What can I do? Well, it's George. George? Is he in some kind of trouble? That's what I don't know. He ain't come home since day before yesterday. A home from where? Home from right here in Dodge. He rode in from the ranch Monday morning, and I ain't seen him since. Huh. That doesn't sound like George. And I'll wait two nights? No, Matt, it don't. I didn't worry too much about the first night. Man has a right to do some celebrating every now and then, but... Uh, Samantha, was he celebrating something special? Well, was mighty special to us, Matt. He just worked the place free and clear. We sold our first big stand of cattle, Matt, and the money took care of all that we was owing. Uh-huh. Uh, was George bringing the money to town? He saddled up the minute he got it. He rightly couldn't wait to pay off that note, Matt. Yeah. All right, Samantha, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go over to the bank. They ought to know something about this. I've been there. I've been every place else I could think of in town. Nobody's seen him. Seems like he never got here at all. Yeah. Tell me this. Who else knew that George was bringing in the money? Nobody... Except maybe Ben. He probably knowed about it all right. Ben? Oh, he's the one who helps you run the place, right? Yes, Matt. 
We took him in when he was just a little boy. Raid got his ma and pa. He's just like our own. Yeah. Nobody else knew. Well, Hobie Price come riding up just as George come out of the barn. They rode off together. Well, have you seen Hobie since then? I asked around for him, Matt, but I ain't found him. Uh-huh. Matt. Yeah. Uh, I ain't never been one to give way. I know you haven't. I, I've got a bad feeling about this, Matt. I got a bad feeling about George. I ain't slept. Samantha, there's no use for a bad feeling yet. You just let me start looking, huh? Yeah. I guess it got to. I ain't getting nowhere. You go on home now. You try to get some rest. It isn't going to do George any good for you to get worn down. I guess you're right. Sure, I'm right. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you better go see Doc, huh? I got no need for doctoring, Matt. Just you find George. Yeah, I'll start looking, Samantha. Right now. time, Kitty. I, uh, I'm looking for Hobie Price. Hobie Price? Yeah. Has he done something? I'm not sure. You seen him lately? I oh, know. Let me see. Um, he hasn't been in today. Well, it's the last couple of days I'm interested in. What, last night? Uh, no, night before. Hobie was in then all right, man. Did you talk to him? <laughs> Nobody could have talked to him that night. Well, what do you mean? He was drinking whiskey like he wasn't ever going to get any more. Buying drinks for everybody in the place. Ah, oh, I see. You, uh, you haven't seen him since? No, ma'am, I haven't. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he was still sleeping at all. All right, Kitty. Thanks. Uh, are you off to look for Hobie Price? Uh, he's one of the people I'm looking for. I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, Matt. See you later. It's no surprise to anybody that the attractive and inexpensive new radios have proved popular. It's no surprise, that is, to anyone who listens to CBS radio. With so much in the way of music, comedy, drama, variety, and news coming your way every day on CBS radio, more than one radio around the house is more than a convenience. It's almost a necessity for anyone who has a daily routine. The man of the house wants to come home to an attractive home and an attractive wife. But household chores in themselves are rarely inspirational. The smart homemaker is one who refuses to let her regular responsibilities get her down. She gets her work done every day, but she gets her entertainment in, too. She has a radio in the kitchen as well as the living room. Chances are, she has a portable radio as well to follow her from one task to another around the house. She knows why the inexpensive new radios are so popular, and she knows the value of CBS radio, too. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. I declare I don't see why we're doing all this riding when all we got to do is find Hobie Price. Maybe. Well, now, Mr. Dillon, Miss Church seen him ride off with her husband, didn't she? Yeah. And Miss Kitty said she seen him throwing his money around that night, didn't she? Yeah. And he ain't nowhere to be found around Dodd, is he? No. Well, I'll let Miss Dillon, it just makes sense. We ought to be riding off after Hobie Price instead of wasting time out here at the church place. Chester, do you know which direction Hobie Price rode off in, do you? Well, no. No, Mr. Dillon, I don't. You I... think we should just sit and dodge and wait until he comes back, do you? Well, no, sir. All right, then. Something else might have happened to church. He might have had an accident right and then. I want to look the countryside over real good. 
Chester. Now, there's a lot of land to cover on the church spread. When we get to the fork, you ride off north and I'll ride south. We'll meet at the ranch house. All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh, don't just stick to the trail, Chester. Take a good look around any trees and through the bushes. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'll look real good. Even though there ain't hardly no likelihood of finding it. You make up your mind about that later. All right, Mr. Dillon, but all the same. Here's the fork. All right, you go that way. You sure you won't need me with you? I think I'll be able to handle it, Chester. Why don't you go along now? All right, Miss Dillon. I guess you know what you're doing. Well, I know what I want you to do anyway. Go on. Get. Chester didn't find anything either, Samantha. Oh. Well, thanks for looking anyway, Chester. Oh, yes, ma'am. And I'm sorry I didn't find nothing. Oh, I mean... Uh, this is Ben Stanley, Chester Proudfoot. I do. Oh, Chester. We've given the ranch and the road to town a good looking over, and we haven't found a thing. You got any ideas, Ben? No, Marshal, I don't. Mr. Church rode off just like he'd always done. Oh, he set off a bit earlier than usual. Oh, well, yeah, he done that all right. He was mighty anxious to get that money to the banker. Yeah. Did you see him before he left? Well, yes, Marshal, sure I did. I helped him saddle up. Now, he didn't say anything to you special about anybody you was going to see or anything? Huh? No, with the banker. Seemed like that was the only thing on his mind, getting the money there and that note paid off. Never set well with George owing any money. He wanted things free and clear. Yeah. Uh, Samantha, did you and George, uh, have any kind of, what, trouble lately? You know, like a, a argument or something? Oh, Matt, if you're thinking he might just have rode off from me, that ain't so. No arguments, sir. Well, I ain't saying George and I never had our differences, because we did, sure enough. We got along, Matt. We was comfortable together. He, he, he wouldn't have rode off, would he, Ben? No, ma'am. No, there wasn't ever nothing like that, Marshal. There's no cause for thinking it. Mm. All right. Matt, you you think you'll find him? Lots of people turn up, Samantha. We'll keep trying. <laughs> Sorry to be back in the office, Miss John. You're getting to be a homebody, Chester. Yeah, no, that ain't so. But I ain't one to want to waste a whole day just riding around in the hot sun, I'll say that. You'll live. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. John. I'll live all right. But we might just as well have stayed here. That's the thing that bothers me. Oh, never mind, Chester. Maybe something came in the mail that's worth your while. I sure do hope so. <sighs> Uh, Chester, would you light some place? You're starting me to fidget in. Oh, well, sure, sure, Mr. John. You, you go right on ahead and read your letters. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. I'm going to get you crazy. What? Oh, uh, nothing, Mr. John. Nothing at all. I'd... Chester, what's the matter with you? You got a beetle under your shirt or something? Why, no, sir, Miss Young, but it does seem that there is always some place that needs scratching. Something bites you? Oh, no, sir, I ain't been bit. They just 
these little red patches here. See there? Look. See? Oh, pull up your shirt. Yes, sir. Ah. You're breaking out in a rash. You better let Doc have a look at that. Oh, no, that ain't easy, Mr. Dunn. It'll be all right. Just an itch. It may be all right for you, but it's not all right for me. Seeing your scratch makes me itch, too. Well, I'm Mr. Dunn. Go I... on, Chester. Take your itch to Doc. This stuff ought to make you feel better, Chester. Now hold still. <laughs> now don't tell me that hurts. Oh, we have. Well, it's cold, Doc. Oh, cold. I bet you're the only person in Dodge today complaining about anything being cold. There. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, I'm glad to do it. I'd hate to see Matt bothered by your scratching the way you said he was. Oh, he sure was. I could have stood it all right, but Mr. Dillon, he was getting pretty edgy about it. Well, you're telling for me that he's lucky he only had you to contend with? How's that, Doc? I had another case just like yours yesterday. Ben Stanley. Funny thing, too. The first time I've seen Ivy poisoning this year... Then there's two of them in two days. All right, Chester. Put your shirt on now. Okay, Doc. It was... Was Ben scratching real bad, too, Doc? Oh, was he? Like three hound dogs with fleas. He had a pretty good case of it. You know, that's good. Well, what's good about it? It's just good to know that somebody else scratched himself when he itched, that's all. And I bet Mr. Dillon would scratch himself, too. Well, he would if he had what you've got. Now, here at Chester, you better take a bottle of this along and dab some of the lotion on your itchy spots every once in a while. It'll keep the itch down. Oh, well, thank you, Doc. That's all right, Chester. As the old saying goes, you, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> oh, you want me to scratch your back, Doc? Oh, no, Chester, never mind. Just go scratch Matt's. This is Dennis James with a longtime favorite. <laughs> yes, the longtime favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand. Since 1919, America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Brand is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. Try it, okay? Okay. Now, Kitty, I didn't find Hobie Price, and I didn't find anything at the church place. Well, you might as well have stayed right here. <laughs> You're thinking of all the beer I'd have bought. <laughs> we don't need your business today, Matt. An awful lot of people are drinking an awful lot of beer. That's yeah, a good day for it. Uh, oh, here comes Chester. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dillon, excuse me, Miss Kibbe, I got some news for him. That's all right, Chester. What is it, Chester? Well, sir, I passed Moss Grimmick on the street, and he said a fellow rode in this morning said he'd seen Holby Pry. Where? Well, aren't it? Says you stand at a hotel there, big as you please. Well, it fixes us a nice hot ride for tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, I hope you have more luck than you had today. Yeah, me too. Now, you must have seen Doc, Chester. You're standing still. Oh, yes, sir, I did. He gave me some white stuff in a bottle. You're supposed to do your drinking in here, Chester. Oh, no, no, Miss Kitty, it, it wasn't a drink. It was to splash on myself to, 
cure me of the itch. Thank goodness it's working. He was driving me crazy, Scratch. <laughs> well, you better start worrying about yourself, Mr. John. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, this itch may be something that's going to spread around. You might get it for yourself. Doc took care of Ben Stanley for it just yesterday. Oh, don't be silly, Chester. I never heard of an epidemic of poison ivy. Neither did I. Ben Stanley? Yes, sir. Doc gave him a bottle of the self-same lotion just yesterday. Chester, Mm -hmm. did you get off your horse when you were riding on the church place this morning? Yes, I did. I watered him at the creek that wandered all over the place there, down in them brambles. Real, real little place here. I'm going to give you a chance to see it again. Well, no, I ain't that anxious. To tell the truth, I'd rather... We'll be riding out there in the morning, early. I thought you were going to learn it. Maybe I won't have to, Kitty. Come on, Chester. Let's go get some sleep. <laughs> All right, now, Chester, there's the creek. Yes, sir, I see it. You'll find the exact place where you got off your horse, huh? Well, yes, sir, but I don't see how it makes all that difference, so... Let me worry about that. Yes, sir. Uh, Let me see if it's all along in here someplace. Yes, sir, I remember that dead log. All right, we'll leave the horses here. you smear Doc's lotion on this morning? Well, I didn't hardly think it was necessary. You may be sorry after you go through these bushes again. That was Dylan? Yeah. If, if George Church was here, I'd have seen him yesterday, wouldn't I? I don't know, Chester. We'll just keep looking for a while. All through these bushes. All right. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get a shovel off one of the horses. Yes, sir. Hmm. Very neat job. Almost too neat. Come on, hurry up, Chester. I'm coming for us, I can, Mr. Dillon. Down there. Mm, gracious alive. Looks like a grave. Yeah, fresh dug. We better see who's in it. Yes, Ain't very deep. He's dug in a hurry. Price drug him here? Not unless he has a case of poison ivy. Oh, Mr. Dunn, you don't think... Yeah, Chester, I think Ben Stanley buried Church's body here and got the itch like you did. That nice young fellow, Mr. Dillon? Well, I could be wrong. I need a lot more than this to tell a judge, anyway. You can't hang a man just for scratching himself. No, you can't, Chester. Come on, let's find out if I'm wrong. Dillon? Yeah, Ben. If I was you, I'd head south from here. I don't think you're going to find much up ahead. Well, there's a creek up there, isn't there, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. There's a creek there. The horses will be needing a drink. We might as well ride that way. They can get a drink down this way, too, Marshal. Oh, not that it matters to me. I just want to help you look around. Yeah, thanks. I think we'll just go ahead for a little while. Marshal, uh... Down in that gully there. That'd be a good place to look. Yeah, we'll take a look at it after we give the horses a drink. Uh, Chester was down in those bushes yesterday. Cut himself a bad case of poison ivy. Isn't that right, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Did you ever get it, Ben? No. No, it doesn't bother me, none. Yeah. 
Doesn't bother me either. I guess we're lucky. Yeah. Lucky. You know, that rash on your neck looks an awful lot like Chester's. No. No, that ain't it. Oh, that's good. Now, here we are. You can lead the horses from here. Now, come on, Ben. Get down and give your horse a chance to drink. Sure, Marshal. Sure. You can lead the horses down. Right about here ought to be a good place. No. I ain't going. Miss Dilney's making a run for it. Hold it, Stanley. Stay there. No, no, no. Shoot. Didn't you, Marshal? Yeah, Ben, I know. When, when did you find him? This morning. I didn't mean to kill him, Marshal. I didn't want to hurt him. Uh-huh. No, I only wanted the money. But he fought me for it. He fought me so hard, Marshal, I had to kill him. Yeah. I, I thought I was all right. Miss Church said you was after Hobie Price. I, I know he rode off to the Willits' place, but nobody else did. And you weren't about to tell, were you? I didn't mean no harm to Mr. Church, Marshal. If he'd just give up the money easy, if he just wouldn't have fought. You know, Ben, some men do funny things like that. Like what, Marshal? Fights. For the things that belong to him. And other men get poison ivy and end up getting hung. All right, come on, Chester. Let's help him on his horse. <laughs> Thousands of copies of the composite forum recommendations of the 1960 White House Conference on Children and Youth have gone out not only to millions of Americans interested in the future of our nation, but to people all over the world. In his address at the opening session of the Golden Anniversary White House Conference on Children and Youth, President Eisenhower said, You are working with the most precious resources of our nation, a whole generation of Americans who will someday make their country's policies and dispose its great power, end quote. This is why the 670 recommendations published by the White House Conference have such wide interest. Check these recommendations. Write, Superintendent of Documents, Government Printing Office, Washington 25, D.C. Ask for Recommendations, 1960 White House Conference on Children and Youth. The price is 35 cents. Check with your state committee or your national or local organizations to see what you can do to help put these recommendations into practice. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. This news follows, after which we join the Mitch Miller Show on the CBS Radio Network.